In the last couple videos, we explored caverns, dino tracks, springs, and 100 million year old fossilized reefs near San Antonio, Texas, which is where the Geological Society of America will be hosting their GSA Connects 2025 meeting this coming October. In this video, we'll explore the geology of the Alamo and the beautiful San Antonio Riverwalk. This geologic story starts with an ancient sea that covered much of Texas over 100 million years ago. This sea is called the Cretaceous Interior Seaway or Western Interior Seaway as it formed during a period of high sea level in the Cretaceous period. The Cretaceous period is known for a few things. Most commonly, people associate the Cretaceous as well as the Triassic and Jurassic periods leading up to the Cretaceous, the whole Mesozoic era. People tend to associate it with dinosaurs. And they're not wrong. Dinos were the dominant terrestrial vertebrates throughout this 200 million year era. Mammals were present, but only rodent-sized. However, there were a few other incredible life forms at this time, just in the sea instead of on land. Great thing about Texas is because the Cretaceous Interior Seaway covered much of the state during this time, we're able to find so many amazing marine fossils right here in the rocks they left behind. The rocks in and around San Antonio are primarily limestone, including the Edwards Limestone Group, as well as the slightly more muddy limestone that makes up the Glen Rose Formation. The Glen Rose is slightly muddier since it was deposited in a more shallow, tidal flat-like environment compared to the slightly deeper carbonate shelf environment of the Edwards Limestone. Actually, it is in these tidal flats and coastline deposits of the Glen Rose Formation that we find the dinosaur tracks from the Cretaceous dinos. They were walking along that coastline. And I talk a lot more about this in the first video I made from this trip. I'll link it down below. There's also chalk preserved in this area from tiny microscopic algae that proliferated in the Cretaceous Interior Seaway, leading to thick chalk deposits that give the Cretaceous its name. Creta means chalk. And within these chalk deposits, the Austin chalk, as well as the limestone, both the Edwards and the Glen Rose formation, there are amazing marine fossils. Not just the tiny microfossils that make up the chalk, but also beautifully preserved mollusk fossils like giant ammonites, reef building rudists, and other cool gastropods and bivalves as well as echinoderm fossils like crinoids, also called feather stars, and echinoids like sand dollars and sea urchins. And even if you search hard enough, we didn't find any on our trip, but they are present in some of these formations, large vertebrate fossils like ancient sharks and giant marine reptiles of the Mesozoic era. I talk more about these organisms in my previous video over the Canyon Lake Gorge, so I'll link that below for you. But for the rest of this video, let's discuss how these rocks and fossils relate to the Alamo and Riverwalk. Because of the sheer abundance of limestone here, it is used in a lot of buildings, including the Alamo itself. And if you visit, you can see some of the 100 million year old mollusk fossils within the walls. Kate, the groovy geologist, and I had a hard time focusing after finding these really cool fossils. <laughs> but the Edwards limestone not only makes up the majority of bedrock in San Antonio and surrounding regions, it is also a huge aquifer aptly named the Edwards Aquifer, and it holds trillions of gallons of water and serves millions of Texas residents. The San Antonio River is fed by springs that pump water up from this aquifer to the surface through fractures and faults in the limestone. The Balcones Fault Zone is what makes this possible. It's a system of extensional faults across this region that formed during the Miocene uplift around 20 million years ago. These faults fractured the limestone, making it super permeable, which is why the aquifer can store and transport so much water. And where those faults intersect with the surface, springs emerge, which result in the San Antonio River. Now, you may have noticed that the river walk itself looks pretty heavily altered by man, and you'd be right. It has been diverted to form this beautiful attraction in the city, but the river itself is naturally spring-fed. And the Spanish colonists knew how important the geology and hydrology of this region was, which is why they built missions 
near these springs. They also used local limestone for construction and carved canals into the rocks to move water. And these missions weren't just religious or military sites. They were strategically placed at the edge of the aquifer where water was abundant and reliable. And if you'd like to come and visit and experience the amazing geology of the San Antonio region for yourself, there is an amazing opportunity coming up this October, the Geological Society of America annual meeting GSA Connects 2025. GSA Connects is not just an amazing geoscience conference where you get to hear all about cutting edge geoscience research and maybe present some yourself, but it also offers field trips that anyone, even non-conference attendees, can join if you sign up through their website. And I'll link more information on how to sign up down below in the description box. And with that, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!